Hey guys, so today I'm in this really weird position <laughs> to talk to you guys about wedging. And it is just something you have got to learn how to do. I'm so sorry. I know I wish we could just cut it off the bag and be done with it forever and ever, but it is a really useful skill to know how to have. So you know how to recycle your clay. So you know how to work with it and actually make it softer and easier to work with. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to cut to an overhead view of everything that's happening, just because it's easier to see my hands. And then we'll come back to this crouching tiger <laughs> hidden dragon view and I can walk you through the body posture and you can see it from another angle so see you in a sec all right so I just want to give you guys a peek at what everything looks like from a different angle because sometimes all it takes is seeing things from a different perspective and something clicks so I'm going to start with how to cut the clay off the block which seems super self-explanatory and a complete no-brainer but there are a couple of things that I think might help you so you've got your bag of clay and you just want to expose the amount of clay that you want. And the first tip is not to cut too little off. So I see pretty often in beginner classes, beginners setting up to cut here. And that's about that deep and that's really not going to be enough to work with it's actually going to be really hard if you get too skinny of a slab it's just as hard as getting too big of a piece so i normally like to shoot for something that is about a four pound block and the reason for that is i can evenly subdivide it really easily and then each of these is about a pound and a pound is a great size for a mug so that generally speaking is maybe two and a half to three inches down. So I'm leaning forward just to make sure that my wire is as straight as it can be. And before I cut, I actually wanna put my thumbs and brace exactly opposite the string and then just pull that towards me, okay? And then I'm gonna have this slab. And if I weren't wedging, I could stand it up and subdivide it. And I always want to pull the the wire towards me i never want to cut down you're not going to get a nice cut you're going to get a really raggedy edge and another quick tip for you is next time you're in the studio and you cut a chunk of clay if you weigh it on the scale and you find that you got the perfect four pound slab in other words it would make four one pound balls take a stick an old paintbrush a straw it doesn't matter and measure the depth and mark it with a sharpie and then you always know okay this far down makes one pound balls do the same thing with two pounds um, and it's just a really handy little tool to have and just know that you're going to consistently get the amount that you want Okay, so we've got our slab of clay to wedge, and I do recommend wedging everything. And <laughs> I know that that's pretty controversial, not only because wedging is kind of a pain in the butt, but it seems like it just wouldn't be an issue when it's fresh in the bag but it is. The water tends to pull towards the side so you don't have the moisture content totally even. And to really, really, really simplify the structure of clay down, imagine it like lots of little scales. And when you wedge, you actually align those scales. And what that means is that the clay wants to take on a certain shape. It wants to work with you. It's much more malleable. When it comes out of the machine that extrudes it into the bags, it basically has a particular twist pattern that's built into the memory of the clay. And if you don't wedge it and create a new memory pattern, then you're gonna be fighting it just a little bit when you center. So it's always good to wedge up your clay. Okay, enough about that. So when it's time to wedge, if you're coming straight off the bag, you're gonna have a slab like this. And I like to place it so instead of it being this way, we're a long way. So if I put my hands along it, we've got long palms and a long slab. And the very first thing I wanna do is put my hands on the side and put my thumbs on top and give it a push. And usually I'd use my body weight standing to do this, but I just want to give you guys a really nice view. So it's gonna take a little more effort without my body weight behind it. So the very first part of a wedge should just look like this. Not much is going on, but you're starting to get that push with your palms. 
And another thing I want to mention really fast is you never, ever, 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 did I mention ever want to wedge on your wheel head. Um, but since this was so perfectly set up and Rob has this gigantinormous bat that yes, he actually uses. Um, he said that I could this very, very one time just to show you how to wedge use it. But in general, don't do that because it's going to mess up sort of the ball bearings and everything of the wheel. So it's not great for the wheel. Okay. Hands on the side, push. The next thing is very lightly, I'm just rolling this clay up. I want to push it back in and then push it down again. And I'm going to do that a few times. I'm going to roll it up. I'm going to make sure I have it from both sides and I'm going to push down. And you're going to start to see a shape happening. And you're probably going to be able to see why very shortly this is called ram's head wedging. So I'm just going to do a few times. It is much more difficult from seated on a sliding bat on a wheel. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay, so this, let me just see if we can see what that is. This is ram's head wedging. And it's named because it looks like it has those spiral horns and these ridges of a nose. And I want to teach you guys a couple of things to look for so you know if you are doing it right you can get instant feedback again it's what I love about clay it tells you exactly what's going on so we do want a couple of these nose ridges but we don't want it to start to develop a long trunk and we do want these spiral horns but what we're looking for I don't know if you can tell but as it's getting basically spun and tightened in the center, you almost don't even see the folds of the clay. You can still see them fairly distinctly on the exterior, but if I'm doing this correctly, as we get towards the interior, you really shouldn't be able to see much. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that usually go wrong when you're first learning how to wedge, what that looks like and how to fix it. So the most common thing is, instead of keeping your hands to the side like this, where the only things pointing up are your thumbs, a lot of people want to grip it almost like a pair of bike handlebars. So no bike handlebars. We really want your hands on the side, containing it and pushing a little bit inward. And the only things that are pointing up are your thumbs. So if you do start to turn your hands and have it more like bike handlebars, this is what's gonna start to happen. Instead of a ram's head, the shape you're gonna start getting is this hammerhead shark shape. Okay, so this part is getting really, really long and this isn't really changing. And the reason that this isn't really changing is you're not doing anything to this clay. You're just spinning this around and making it long and basically you're applying downward force. And just like in centering, when you push down and it makes that slope and it distributes the clay outward, same thing here. You're not tightening the clay and getting it to compress in on itself. You're just smushing it out. So if you start to see that instead of a compact ram's horn, you're getting a hammerhead shark, you're probably, your hands are probably doing this. So the way to fix that is to just, you can tap those horns in and come up and really be conscious about squeezing inward before you push down. Squeeze inward, push down. So you're really trying to contain those horns from flying out. Okay, the next thing I see is either a really long nose, almost turning into an elephant trunk, or no nose at all. So an elephant trunk usually comes from taking it and then pushing really far away from you. And so it's the same sort of thing. I'm twisting these horns. Nothing is happening to all of this clay though. I'm just spinning these horns around and around. So if this starts to get really, really long on you, you know that probably what you're doing is when you're rolling your clay up, instead of a short, compact, almost like pop downward, you're probably pushing really far away from you. And if you start really pushing away from you, you're gonna start to get these gills on the side. And this is what I'm talking about with those gills. So basically you're just smearing the clay outward. So if you're starting to get gills, again, you need to make sure that you're really containing that clay from the side, from each side, and that you're doing a short pop downward. And what I mean by that is if I were to draw a line on the top of this ram's head, when I roll it up, I want this line to be pointing 
about straight up and down, or if we were imagining a clock face going this way, up to 12. I hope that makes sense. When I am pushing down and away, if we're going with that clock face thing, you know, depending which way I'm facing, it would be like four o'clock or on this side, eight o'clock, depending on how you're looking at the clock. So it's just a short pop. It's not straight down. It's a little bit forward of straight. And you'll know after just a couple of rotations if you're on the right track. Now, what happens if you roll it up, and here's that line, we'll do that line just so you have a visual. If you roll it up, and instead of stopping where it's pointing straight up, what if you roll it pretty far towards you and then push down? I'm glad you asked, I'll show you. So what you're gonna start to get is really big gaps and folds. And instead of it just being around the outside, eventually this entire part will be these big gaps and folds. And the reason is instead of compressing the clay and working the air out, you're actually folding air in. And there'll be a couple of things that will help you recognize that this is what you're doing. So the first one will be these bigger and bigger gaps around the edges. And the second will be your ram has tragically lost its nose. It has basically no nose. So if that's happening, it just means that you're pulling it too far forward and then popping it straight down instead of a little forward. So you can see he's, he's a poor, distorted, melted little ram's head. Okay, so once more with feeling, the right way to do this, hands on the side, you're rolling it up to about vertical, maybe a hair forward, but definitely not like that. So somewhere in this range, I'm pushing in from the side and it doesn't mean that I'm using all my strength and force. I'm just making sure that when I push forward, it doesn't squidge out the side. So I'm compressing from the side so that my hands look like parentheses and then pushing down. The only thing on top is my thumbs. When I'm rolling it up, there's no pressure. I'm just rolling it up. I'm re-gripping, pushing in, pushing down. And you just want to repeat that. And I'm going to tell you how many times to repeat it and you're going to be sad about it. If it's new off the bag, probably 50 of these revolutions. If it is old, nasty clay, you're really talking more like maybe a hundred. The next thing I wanted to show you was what to do to go from here, from our cute little sweet little lamb, ram, sorry, not lamb, um, to a log of clay that you can use. So let's pretend that I had done my <laughs> due diligence and that two seconds there was actually 50 to 100 twists, which <laughs> it was like five. Um, to get it rolled up, all I would do is just roll it toward me while applying some downward pressure. And the reason I want that downward pressure is as I roll, I don't want to create really big rolls or gaps in the clay. So I will have those lines where the horns were, but I'll have a pretty compact sort of bullet shape. Now, if I'm doing something larger that would require the whole piece of clay, something I really want to keep in mind is the direction of the spiral that I've built in. What spiral? So when you are twisting the clay, you are running a spiral all the way through. You can kind of see it on the ends of the horns on the side, but that actually runs all the way through. And similar to how you would look for a crack on a ball of clay before you put it down to center, the same thing is true for wedging. So if we were to put this spiral, so the spiral runs this way, remember, and if we were to put that down, you know, the clay is wanting to spin in this direction, right? So while it does align with the direction of the wheel, there is a little bit of a chance that you might develop a spiral fracture. So whenever I cut my clay after wedging, and I normally actually make it into like a little bullet, and I know slapping on camera is so obnoxious, so I'm sorry. So I normally make it into a little bullet, and whenever I cut through, and this might be bubbly, aha, huzzah, not bubbly, um, I want to note which way the spiral is. So the spiral is here, and the spiral is here. And you can just make a little dimple or something that lets you know where that spiral will go. And we want that spiral to point to either side, not up or down. 
Another thing I wanted to talk about is sometimes when you're brand new and you cut through your clay, you wanna know what an air bubble looks like. So these striations in the clay are not air bubbles. And these little pieces right here are actually just pieces of clay that got drug through, maybe from a dirty wire tool or the texture of the wire. That's not an air bubble. I'm gonna see if I can create an air bubble with really poor wedging for you, although, let me see if I can just twist it in all directions and do everything I can think of wrong and see if we can catch an air bubble for you so I can show you what one looks like. <laughs> now, when you want to wedge larger pieces of clay, um, there is something called spiral wedging, which unfortunately I happen to be doing. So I'm gonna stop that. And we will do a video on that. And that is really for large pieces of clay that, you know, it's just easier to move that way. Dang it. So. <laughs> I've never wanted an air bubble so bad in my life. Okay, so air bubble-less, but actually, okay. So this sort of will give you an idea. Can you see right here, right here, this would be sort of what an air bubble looks like, but somewhere in the interior where it looks like a little torn section. And I almost think it looks like a torn deflated balloon and it can be that small. And I'm sorry I couldn't get one going for you, but I did wanna show you the difference. Let's see, we're gonna try one more time. Okay, cut through there. Ah, no. Okay, well, this sort of gives you an idea. This is just at the very edge, but it will look like this. It can be much smaller. It could be like this or this, but you see how there's almost like a torn or blown out quality versus just the, the drag of the wire tool. It's very, very different. One looks like a tear and one is just a drag. <laughs> it's just a drag. Okay, so that's how to wedge clay right off the bag. But what happens if you have sloppy, wet, nasty clay that you need to wedge up? You can take, this is our beloved piece of centering clay that was used for about 50 minutes longer than it should have been. <laughs> so it's got lots of water in it. Um, I could actually at this point center this up just the way I showed you with ram's head wedging. Um, but generally speaking, if you go to wedge and it just smears all the way across the table, that clay needs to be dried out a little bit. And one of my favorite ways to do that is to just, oh, there's an air bubble. That's what one looks like right there. You can just squeeze it into, I mean, I was gonna say a rainbow, but this <laughs> looks like a bowel. Um, make it into a little rainbow and sit it up like this. And basically what you've done is you've increased the surface area so that the air can help dry it out pretty fast. And that's a good way to get it going pretty quickly. If you've got lots of separate pieces of clay that you need to join together, if they are all of the same dryness level, you can slap them all together. And I like to drop them and turn them so I get this cube where I can start almost like I'd start from cutting off the bag. So I'm making this cube. And once I have a cube, I can just go right back in and ram's head wedge that. What happens if you have on one hand, super duper wet sloppy clay, and then just regular clay or clay that isn't as wet? Well, what you can do is get both of those into one of these loose cube shapes. And I'll do the same thing over here as best I can. And this guy I'm calling my really wet piece and this guy I'm calling my normal piece. And once I have cubes or cube-like objects, I'm just going to take thin slabs of one and then the other and alternate back and forth. One of the normal, one of the super sloppy wet. And as I'm making this stack, this very lopsided stack. Um, when I'm cutting this off, I'm actually changing direction. So one I did there, one I did there, one I did there, one I did there. I'm just gonna keep rotating until I've made uh, like a sandwich, a million decker sandwich, where the super wet stuff is in between the stuff that isn't as wet. And then I can do the same thing where I pounce it into a cube. And then when I go to wedge it, I want to actually wedge in the direction 
opposite the slices. So if I were to wedge this way, I'd be going with the slices. I wanna go opposite the slices and that'll help really incorporate everything into a nice, cute little petite <laughs> ram's head. If you're having trouble working with your clay, um, I think I'm probably gonna say it in every video because it's absolutely life-changing. You can just alter the water content. And so if you didn't catch it in my centering video, you can just take your bag of clay and reveal the, you know, the stack, the cube of clay, take a wood knife, and this part's kind of violent, but stab, you know, as deep as you can, lots and lots of holes, and then fill those holes with water, tie your bag up, set it aside for a few days, and then definitely, definitely, definitely wedge this up. But it will make your life a total absolute dream. And I think you'll probably find that when you wedge up your oopsies, your mistakes, you're really gonna be enjoying life too, because it's just so much nicer to work with soft clay. All right, so I am going to go to that other view and show you the posture because again, it's all about leveraging your body weight, but how to stand and use your body to wedge and make it as easy as possible. Okay guys, we're back to the awkward leaning end view. <laughs> I um, want it to be known that I am being eaten alive by mosquitoes. So I am risking life and limb to bring you the joys of wedging. <laughs> I also thought it'd be super cute to be like on point and on brand with our Potter t-shirt, but again, in Mosquitoville, not the best call. Okay, so wedging from the front view. And so you can see the position that I'm in. So when I am wedging, I actually am mainly using a motion of rocking back and forth rather than initiating from my shoulders and my arms. I'm actually in a staggered stance with my right foot forward, but it doesn't really matter which. And I'm just rocking back and forth. And I know I equate everything to a bad 90s dance, but this is another one. Like if there had been a song about a grandma and a rocker, I mean, maybe there were, you know, like the shopping cart and the sprinkler, this is the rocker. And you're just gonna go back and forth. All right, so I wanna set up with my hands on either side of the clay. I am in that staggered stance. My front leg is bent just a little bit. My hands are on the side. And again, the only thing that's on top of the clay is my thumbs. My thumbs are pointing up, but my hands are on the side. And the first thing that happens is I just lean into it. So that's it. And I just wanna double check and nothing significant is gonna be going on here, but you'll see the outline of my palm print on either side. And that's your first check. And if you've done that, huzzah, you did the first step correctly. Okay. so. Again, let me readjust my very <laughs> impressive table. All right, my hands are on the side. I'm gripping inward and I'm pushing down. I'm rolling it towards me. And when I roll it towards me, there's very little pressure on the side. I'm gripping from the side, I'm leaning in. And I'm gonna do it a few more times, a little quicker. Not so quick that I break my table <laughs> setup, but just to give you the idea. Okay. So after you've done a few revolutions, that's the time to check in with your ram's head shape. So what you wanna be looking for, and I know we saw this overhead, but because I couldn't check it, I just wanna make sure you're seeing what I want you to be seeing. So the first thing is you do want some ridges, a couple of chins, not so much that starts to look like a trunk. You want the horns to be in and compact. You don't want any gills on the side. And when you look at the horns, what you want to start to see developing is you want, instead of these deep folds, which is just gonna happen on the outside, in the interior, you want it to start to look smooth. And that means that those turns are really tight. And instead of incorporating air in, which looks more like this, but it would be on the inside, you're really working the air out. So all you have to do is really just look at your clay and let it tell you how to troubleshoot what is going on. And if you thought you needed a gym membership to stay fit during the pandemic, you're wrong. You just need to wedge a lot of clay and you'll start to get some really nice uh, Michelle Obama arms. All right, so I just wanna go over from this angle to the hammerhead shark thing and the gill thing real fast, just so you can see the no-nos from this angle. Okay, so hammerhead shark thing, that again is your hands on top and it looks more like this. 
And I don't know if you can see the difference. So this is Hammerhead Shark World, okay? And this is Ram's World. The Lost Worlds of Mario Brothers. Okay, Ram, Hammerhead. Do you see the difference? And really when I'm doing this Hammerhead thing, it's twisting. And when I'm doing the Ram's head, it's more like contain and push, contain, push, contain, push. And the other thing I wanted you guys to look out for was rolling it too far towards you. And then when you push, you're going to start getting these really deep, thick folds with the really thick creases. And that's just going to trap tons of air in there and you're not going to be happy. It's going to be a thousand times harder to throw with. And so just look for that. And you'll also see my entire body posture changes based on where I'm pushing it. So if I'm putting those deep folds in, you know, my arms are close in and I'm basically doing more of a bow from my waist rather than a push. So the motion really is like at an angle down like this <laughs> 90s dance again um, just I wasn't doing dancing in the 90s I wasn't doing a lot of dancing but I don't know it all comes back to that okay so what else long trunk or too many noses is from the opposite problem so you're bringing it up but then you're pushing really far away so instead of it being a quick pop so quick pop correct it's gonna be a long smeary push. And two things are gonna happen. You're gonna to start to get way lots of noses and you're gonna to start to get these frilly gills on the side. And basically all that you're doing is just smashing the clay right here. And this is not really getting incorporated. So I think that that's basically everything on wedging. and. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of breath because it's hot and this is not a super convenient table. We'll just say that that's why. Um, if you have questions on wedging that I haven't answered, just let us know in the comments and I'll be sure to either do a follow-up video or to try to answer your questions in the comments or in the email. And we will be doing a video on the spiral wedging, which is dealing with really large pieces of clay. So thanks for watching guys and I hope that this answers some of the questions that you had.